Kenai Fjords National Park is a land where the Ice Age still lingers. Spectacular glaciers creep down mountainsides to meet up with the tidewater's edge, enticing visitors the world over to come and view the splendor and pause for a time to listen to the ice. As the Earth's temperature warms and weather events around the planet remind us that our world is changing, in ways that we do not completely understand, many people seeking clues to forecast our future are coming to Kenai Fjords and other Alaskan national parks to listen to the ice. They come to see changes not yet evident in other parts of the country. Here, accelerated melting of glaciers are predicting the planet's future. Bruce Molnia, a research geologist for the U.S. Geological Survey, has been studying the glaciers of Kenai Fjords for the past several years. One of his projects focuses on documenting change by comparing today's glaciers with photographs that were taken nearly a century ago. 95 years ago, U.S. Grant and D.F. Higgins were mapping mineral deposits in Prince William Sound. And then they went around west of Seward and looked at the glaciers that are now part of Kenai Fjords National Park. They photographed many of the larger glaciers and also produced sketch maps that showed the position of the termini of these glaciers in the summer of 1909. The results of Monia's work show dramatic changes in the extent of the glacier ice in Kenai Fjords. In some cases, glaciers have receded miles, revealing deep water ocean fjords in their wakes. In other cases, fresh land has been released from the glacier's icy grip, and the transformation from bare rock to forest is well underway. What this does, though, it helps us to document scientifically that climate is changing. It doesn't tell us why climate is changing, but it tells us climate is changing. Climate doesn't change in a single location. It changes globally. Some places it warms, some places it cools, some places temperature may not change, but cloud cover can change. The frequency of precipitation can change. The amount of precipitation can change. For someone who has no concept of Alaska or no real interest in why the glaciers are changing here, this is just another piece of the scientific puzzle that helps build a better understanding and a global perspective of how climate not only is changing now but will continue to change into the future. Alaska has become the world's icy crystal ball, showing accelerated effects of climate change in part because of feedback loops. A feedback loop is an event caused by warming, which in turn causes more warming and creates a perpetual cycle. The melting of Arctic and subarctic ice, which has accelerated recently, is a strong feedback loop. The light-colored ice reflects much of the sun's heat energy, whereas the darker land and ocean water absorbs heat energy. Warming temperatures melt the ice, which exposes more dark land and ocean water, causing more of the sun's heat's energy to be absorbed, which further warms the region, causing more ice to melt. The glaciers of Kenai Fjords serve not only as a barometer of global climate, but also provide a local habitat for species like harbor seals and the tiny Kitlitz murlet, animals whose life cycles appear to be tied to the iceberg stream waters at the glacier's edge. The ice margin of a tidewater glacier is a place where, because of calving, because of temperature differences, because of subglacial streams dumping into the fjords, you get a lot of circulation and the circulation results in upwelling, and the upwelling may actually bring nutrients to the surface that contribute to the growth of algae, plankton, smaller uh, copepods, and so on, things that the birds are eating. As that environment disappears, you lose a habitat, and we're seeing that in a number of locations throughout southern Alaska. Melting glaciers and shrinking habitat are cause for concern among park staff who are tasked with preserving park resources for future generations. While there is no magic band-aid that can be put on the glaciers to keep them from melting, the park is taking a proactive stance to raise awareness of climate change and to offset their own operational impacts to the global climate. In the summer of 2006 and 2007, park rangers gave daily talks and walks for visitors that focused on climate change. 
The park also purchased its first hybrid vehicle and will seek to do this in the future whenever replacing park vehicles. The electrical needs of the Exit Glacier Nature Center are met using a hydrogen fuel cell. And in 2006, Kenai Fjords purchased renewable energy credits to offset 100% of its electrical, gasoline, diesel, and airline travel operational needs. Renewable energy credit purchases support the development of alternative energy sources. In the end, preserving areas like Kenai Fjords provides not only recreational opportunities today and for future generations, but also provides a living laboratory for research and understanding of the natural world around us. Over the last 250 years, there's been a very complex response of the glaciers in Alaska to changing climate. And understanding in more detail how Prince William Sound and Kenai Fjords fit into this picture will allow us to be a lot more accurate and knowledgeable when we talk about the entire Alaskan region's response to changing climate. I had read Grant and Higgins long before I ever had an opportunity to visit Prince William Sound and Kenai Fjords. On paper, it sounds really dramatic to hear about these rapid glacier retreats and to uh, visualize with the maps they provide the significant changes in the topography. But until you get here and actually look at the magnitude, the height of some of these mountain ridges that were completely under the ice less than 100 years ago, it's mind boggling. To, you know, to understand that part of a natural system as complex as the Earth system can change that rapidly is just phenomenal.